Hello class. One of your colleagues asked me to rework this uh, problem on the market for lemons that was found in chapter 10. And first I thought we would do the one that's described in the text. That's on page 198, kind of on the middle of the page. And I've set it up here. Uh, the assumption is that there are nine cars. They range from a pure lemon of zero quality to a perfect car of uh, 2.0. And then the, the sellers, the sellers know the quality of their cars. And so in the example, it says that imagine that the sellers are willing to sell their cars for $7,500 times whatever the quality is. So this guy that's holding the crummy car, he's really willing to give his car away. And this guy that down here that's holding the perfect car, he'd want $15,000 for his car because he wants, uh, I might have done that wrong. Let's see, what does it, yeah, the seller wants 5,000. So let's back that up. So it should be $5,000 times the quality, sorry. $5,000 times the quality, all the way down. So I hope you can see that the guy holding the crummiest car is willing to just give it away, and the guy holding the perfect car of a 2.0 wants $10,000 for his car. Okay? The buyers, on the other hand, don't really have any idea about the particular quality of any one car. Instead, all they know is the average quality of all the cars. So we need a term called average quality. And the average quality, of course, is just the average of all the ones that are there. Right? So the buyer's offer, according to the assumptions in the problem, are that they will pay $7,500 times however many units of quality that there are. And I need to nail down that C7 sell because it never moves. Okay, and so then we have the buyer's offers. Whoa, I messed up somewhere. 7,000 times C7. Oh, it's not C7. Where in the world did that even come from? Let's start that over. So it should be $7,500 times this cell right here, C16, and I want to nail that cell down. Okay, hopefully that's better. There we go. Okay, so now we have our setup. The buyers are willing to offer $7,500. That's based on the average quality of the cars. But the sellers all have different prices depending on the quality they know to be true. Then the exercise says, imagine that you have an auctioneer and he starts with a high price and he just lowers the price until the number of cars being offered for sale equals the number of cars that buyers would like to buy. So let's start at 10,000. At 10,000, at 10,000, all the sellers want to sell, so there are nine cars offered, but there are no buyers because the top price for any car is only 7,500. So then the auctioneer says, well, okay, how about uh, 9,000 or you know 8,900 or 8,800 and so forth. So to kind of speed up this example, the auctioneer will finally get down to 8,750. And when he does, the number nine car is just gone, right? Because the, the high quality car, that owner needs $10,000 or wants $10,000 for their car. The auction price is below that now, so they just leave the market. Now can you see, when they leave the market, the average quality changes. It used to be 1.0, now it's only 0.875 because it's just the average of the remaining cars. All right, so at $8,750, all the sellers are willing to sell, but again, there are no buyers because the top price from the buyers is $6,562.50. So as the price falls below, 8,750, the number eight buyer just disappears because that's what they need. Now there are only seven cars left. I hope you can still see that when the price is 7,500, that there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven cars offered for sale at that price, but there are no buyers. So the price falls below 7,500 and the number seven car disappears. Now we have six cars. The price finally falls below 6,250 and that car disappears. Now there's only five cars. 
The price finally falls below 5,000. That card disappears. The price continues to fall. And can you see that each time the price falls, eventually another card falls out. The buyer's offer is reduced. And that never, ever meet. The market completely collapses. Unless, of course, you want to think about the extreme case when the auction price gets all the way down to zero. It's really weird. When the auction gets all the way down to zero, the seller is willing to offer his car for zero dollars and the buyer is willing to take it for zero dollars. And I guess that exchange would occur and the buyer would drive it off, assuming that the car would drive it all. And so, uh, but uh, we would just say that the market collapsed. There, there's no uh, prices. Okay, so then when you look at the exercise at the end of the chapter, that's problem number one on page 209. The assumptions are slightly different. So I'm just going to kind of rebuild this thing back like we had it. All right, so this is where we started. And now it says, imagine that there are only eight cars, and they range in quality from 0.25 up to 200. So what they're really talking about is that this car is not there. So I'm just going to renumber these. So now there are eight cars, all right, ranging in quality. The average quality is 1.125. The buyers, of course, only see the average quality. So the, the top price that the buyers would offer is $8,437.50. The sellers, on the other hand, have all different kind of ideas about what they would want to sell their car for. And those numbers are all come from the assumptions that the sellers want $5,000 times the units of quality that they have in their car. And the buyers are willing to pay $7,500 times the average quality. OK, so let's start our example again. At $10,000, all eight cars are offered for sale, but there are no buyers willing to pay. So the price falls below $10,000, and the number eight car disappears. The price eventually gets all the way down to 8750 Now we have seven cars, but the top price, the top offered price for the buyer is 7500 So again, no equilibrium. The price falls below 8750 That guy disappears. Eventually, the price gets all the way down to 7500 So we've got uh, six cars offered for sale. At 7500 but we got no buyers, so the price falls below there. That guy disappears. Eventually, the price will get all the way down to 6250 We have uh, five cars offered for sale, but no buyers. So the price falls below that. That car disappears. Eventually, the price will get down to 5000 OK, we're getting close now. At $5,000, there are four cars offered for sale, but there are no buyers. The buyer's top price is $4,687.50. So no trade occurs. So the price falls below 5000 The number four firm, number four car disappears. Now eventually the price will get down to $3,750. Now when it does that, I hope you can see that there are three cars offered for sale and the buyers are willing to pay $3,750. So in this example, the market does come into equilibrium with three cars offered for sale. So this is the kind of math behind the uh, the uh, asymmetric information in the marketplace. And it applies to healthcare because uh, there's a lot of discussion that the information that the patients have and the information that the doctors have is not the same. So some people argue that markets for healthcare are inefficient because of that. There is a discussion in the book, however, that points to uh, methods of that uh, buyers can use to try to gain more information. And one of the more obvious things is uh, warranties can occur, and uh, almost every uh, used car dealer, or, you know, quality used car dealer, will offer a warranty on its car. And uh, in the case of healthcare, uh, there are uh, consultants, there are second opinions, there are, uh, there is information you can get that describes doctors not perfect, but there are efforts to get around this problem of asymmetric information. Okay, I hope you found this problem helpful. Good luck.